Gaming creep process used to be a huge deal on the internet. Video games have always been a powerhouse of entertainment, so it made sense for creepypastas and video games to come together and make something of interest. The weirdest part that I'm sure you're thinking is, how are video games scary? I mean, outside of just being a horror game, that is. Well, it's simple. Basically, the games were haunted. Yeah, that's it. The entirety of gaming creepypastas explained in one sentence. No, I'm kidding, of course. Though most of the stories did boil down to that. I downloaded, bought, was given this game, and wow, it's not like I remember at all. And I don't mean the graphics, either. The whole game is now, um, playing their songs backwards. Many of the games that had creepypastas created about them were games from many of our childhoods. Mario, Sonic, Pokemon, those were three of the biggest franchises to get spookified. It was a nostalgia trip of sorts, and that somehow made it all creepier. Take this non-creepy nostalgic game from when I was a kid and add a ghost or two. Oh, and lots of blood. I've always loved a bit of spooky in my games, and gaming creepypastas were almost too perfect for me by merging my love for gaming and my love for all things horror. There's also just something innately more creepy about a game that's not meant to be a horror game, or was meant for kids. On the other side of things though, many of the gaming creepypastas were really, well, poorly written, and all started copying elements from the most popular creepypastas. An example of this would be the inclusion of gratuitous blood and gore, hyper-realistic eyes, which were in almost every story during this era, and music playing backwards or with demonic sound effects or growling sound effects. There were several really well-written creepypastas that used these, but once everyone started to use them, they just became tropes in a sea of copycat stories. The gaming creepypasta subgenre hasn't really produced anything of substance in a long time. That isn't to say the creepy game scene is dead, though. There's plenty of games with creepy hidden undertones that still lurk around internet forums and YouTube theory videos. Though we'll never get stories like we did back then, for better or worse. There were some creepypastas that became frontrunners in the subgenre for being slightly believable, shared the most often, or because they had material to go along with this story. I'm going to talk about two that stuck with me, and even to this day I occasionally think about them. The first creepypasta I want to talk about is one of my favorites, and personally freaked me out a lot when I read it years ago. It's based off a game I didn't play a ton, to be honest, though I spent uh, plenty of time playing its sequel. JVK116Z.ESP was a creepypasta based around a mod for Morrowind, a prequel to Oblivion and Skyrim. The story starts with a mod with the same title being passed around various small Morrowind communities that the author is curious about. The mod apparently didn't work and would just crash your game after about an hour of sitting on the loading screen which is very similar to how my copy of Skyrim reacts when I have a couple hundred mods installed on it. The author then claims that the mod died out, after it was called a virus by the community, and that it corrupted your game and save files. Which would be a pretty anticlimactic ending to this story, but it doesn't end there. About a year later, the author received word from someone on one of the forums, saying he got the game to work by using DOSBox. The first thing the friend of the author had noticed was the game was doomed from the start. And by that I mean every NPC required to complete the main quest line was already dead in game. Which is a pretty bleak start to the story, and actually would eventually go on to become something pretty common in gaming creepypastas. The feeling of being isolated in a game can set a pretty creepy mood, which was done perfectly in games like Silent Hill. The friend then begins searching through the game to try to figure out the mod. While traveling around he noticed his character would take damage from time to time. Not much, but it would increase the longer that he stayed in the same place. Soon he noticed a figure was following him one dressed in a cloak that was later named the Assassin by the community. The creepy factor being that no matter where the player went, he was always followed by this creature. At night and at random intervals, the NPCs in the world would all go outside and just look up at the sky. If you tried to talk to them, all they would say was, watch the sky. Which isn't insanely creepy, but after they were done, they'd all just go back to whatever they were doing at the same time. Like they'd never done it at all. There was a quest line added to the game which had you going into a dungeon called the Citadel, Inside there was a room known as the Portrait Room, which of course was filled with random images from your pictures folder on your PC. That might seem creepy, but lots of files can already do this to your PC. I guess it's still pretty creepy that files exist that can do this. And when the author went in there, pretty much everyone just put porn in this room, so. The internet will still be the internet. The NPCs after this fell silent. The NPCs after this fell silent. Except for during the nights when they would repeat the watch the sky phrase. It was a little creepier since they wouldn't say anything otherwise. Just 
dots across the screen whenever you try to talk to them. Also, the assassin was still following the player this entire time, but this time he started to scream at the player. Eventually, the friend of the author decides he's going to keep the game on and see what happens if he just lets it run. The story ends with the friend waking up to the sound of his character swimming out toward the citadel and passing out at his computer while having weird dreams. He's writing a message to the author when he hears this tapping at his window while he's not able to see the assassin anymore in the game. This story creeped me out a lot because I have this weird fear of looking out my window and having someone, something, looking back at me or staring at me while I'm unaware. The earliest posting I could find of this was in 2013, which would make sense since that's around the time that gaming creepypastas were becoming more relevant on the internet. As for the story itself, it's pretty good. The idea of creepy mod messing with your game files is rather believable and could be creepy in the right scenario. Especially if you imagine how much time we spend playing games late into the night by ourselves in our rooms. The ending was creepy, but it did ruin that believability of making the assassin appear to tap at the friend's window. Though it was never confirmed that's what was actually happening, so maybe he just freaked himself out and decided not to bother with it anymore. The next story is about a game near and dear to all our hearts. Well, probably. Sonic the Hedgehog, or as the creepypasta was called, Sonic.exe. Sonic.exe took the internet by storm when the story was released, and was immediately covered by every single creepypasta channel on YouTube. The creepypasta was every single creepypasta cliche wrapped into one package, but like where you could see everything inside the package already because it was, well, poorly wrapped. The story goes that a man named Tom receives a haunted version of Sonic the Hedgehog from his friend, who apparently has gone mad or something, and he's told to destroy the game at all costs. The actual creepypasta is nothing to write home about, so instead I'll talk about the game that accompanies the creepypasta. The game starts with a demonic sounding voice doing the Sega intro. You know, the one where they yell Sega at you while the Sega logo is loading. The Sonic logo appears as normal, but as you click start, the water in the background turns blood red. Sonic's eyes turn black with a single red dot in the center, and at the bottom, Sega reads Sega 666. Now these are all extremely common creepypasta tropes. Red bloodshot eyes, so much red that it looks like an 80s slasher film, and an evil demonic 666 thrown in for good measure. A lot of stories in the gaming creepypasta subgenre did this. I know why they did it, they all wanted to be the next creepypasta meme, but when it becomes such a staple that every story uses it, that kind of degrades its value. Anyways, back to the story. After the game starts, you get to the character select screen, and you can't actually pick Sonic, only Tails, Robotnik, and Knuckles. The author makes a special note of playing Robotnik, and reminds the reader that he didn't know it, something was wrong with the game until he got to this section. Also, some music was playing backwards. Picking Tails, the game starts in Green Hill Zone, but with a few things altered to the title card. Tails flies down a never-ending patch of Green Hill Zone until he starts to see animals that are mutilated in the background. Remember I said gratuitous gore was common theme in Creek Gaming Creepy Bastas? Well, here it is. Tails eventually finds Sonic at the edge of the screen and seems relieved for a moment. The second he approaches him, though, the screen turns to static and then goes black. The words, hello, do you want to play with me, appear on screen. Then the next screen has Tails flying as fast as he can away from Sonic, who is closing in on him, and no matter how fast he moves, he is always going to be caught. Sonic finally catches Tails, and the screen goes black to a loud stock screen. What follows is a similar story for the next two characters. They run until creepy stuff happens, then they are killed by a demonic Sonic. Finally, when the game ends, the screen cuts to black once more, and a creepy picture of Sonic with the phrase, I am God appears before shutting down. There's a few things I skipped over, like the author having nightmares about the game before actually finishing it, and the end is literally the author finding a stuffed Sonic plushie on his bed that looks just like the Sonic in the game. It was kind of lame, honestly. How was this story, though? Well, for being one of the earliest gaming creepypastas that I remember finding, it's not too bad. Of course, retellings of the story were much better than the original, which just had every bad cliche and trope thrown in for good measure. Nostalgic game, check. Music playing backwards, Check. Kefka laugh. Check. It pretty much hit all the worst aspects of gaming creepypastas and then some, but it was still an enjoyable time, I think. Someone actually made a game that fits perfectly with the creepypasta, so if you're interested, you could check that out. I think that's going to do it for me for gaming creepypastas. I looked at one that I remember being pretty good and one I remember being pretty bad. Maybe I'll do this again sometime. I have a fond nostalgia for these stories and creepypastas in general. If you liked the video, please leave a comment and let me know what you think. 
and what you'd like to see in the next video.